Hi, I'm Seamless, and this is the very beginning of a brand new FL Studio Basics series based entirely on FL Studio 12. Um, I already have a series that I did with FL 11, however, because FL 12 was actually quite a big change, I kind of need to do it again. This is the first one. This is going to be the Zero to Hero video, which I did also for FL 11, and the point of this video is I'm going to show you, not necessarily as fast as possible, but pretty quickly, how to get a handle on actually getting to create something, to arrange something, and to render something as fast as I can get to do, to do, to do, to do so, if I can talk. Um, after that, each individual video that comes out after will focus on one particular element and go very hard into detail about what it can do and what options are available to it. However, I'm going to gloss over a lot of those details and things and descriptions and information for this particular video. So, new FL, totally un un empty, not much happening. The way that FL's sort of signal path works is that in the sequencer, which is this guy here, you have these channels, which are these people here. These are these are sampler channels, but when you add anything into it, with the plugin picker, for example, they will show up as a channel. These are now channels. Every channel has channel settings. And unlike FL11, they're actually attached to the plugin now, which is totally awesome because, man, that was really hard to find the thing sometimes. But I don't have to worry about that. You might not even know what I'm talking about, and you don't need to care. Once you have a channel, you can make sounds. You can make arrangements, which are fun. I'm at 150 for some reason. And, you know, do... Do what you want to do about that business. This is where you kind of write patterns. You could either write it with the sequencer data here, or you could do MIDI piano roll stuff. This is where the piano roll is. You can either access the piano roll from up here, or you can right click on the thing and say piano roll like I just did. And you got sounds. Now I have open here. Hilariously, I didn't really mean to do that, but I just kind of did it by reflex. This is the playlist window. This is where you arrange things. It's, it's called the playlist because, um, actually for a lot of for reasons that don't exist anymore in FL Studio, but that's what it's called. It's more or less the arrangement window. Um, and this is where when you click on an element, let's say a pattern, we can paste the pattern inside the playlist. So here's my pattern one and my pattern two. And that's what that is. And now we are hearing the sound already come out of FL Studio, but in order to get a more detailed mix, we need to use the mixer, which is on this button. And here's the mixer. The mixer is probably going to be the biggest video in this entire series because, man, it can do a lot of really fun stuff now. Um, to get things in the mixer, we go to the channel, and then we can say what mixer insert that they're in. These four guys were already here by default, so they're already linked to places, but this one's linked to M, otherwise known as the master. So let's put them in number five. This is how you do that. You click on this and you drag. You also could, if you want, in the plugin picker, to pick a thing, drag and drop it into the mixer. And it has the benefit of not only renaming it into what it is, it also colors the number so you can kind of see what, what it is. Yay. And then once you have this, this is essentially a song, and you just keep doing that. Adding things, putting them in the mixer, arranging them in the thing. There's obviously a lot more complicated stuff you could be doing to sounds, but we're not going to cover any of that because this is just the video to get you acclimated to the workflow of FL in a very basic, very quick method. So now we're going to render it. File, export, and you have a bunch of options. Zip loop package will save the project and also save inside a zip all the samples that you used in the project. If you use samples that came with FL Studio, you don't need to do that if you want to send it to someone else. You just send them the file, and they'll open up too. But if you have third-party or custom samples, this is what you would do in order to send them all to them all at once. You can save it as a WAV file, MP3, MIDI, all these things. Don't worry about the MIDI for now. Uh, let's do WAV file. Save it as hero to hero. And then we get the render options, where we can even, even in here tell it that we want to do uh, different formats. You can even do multiple formats at one time. However, I'm only going to do MP3. Let's try that. We have the various different options. I already have it set to being 320 kilobytes per second. Um, a bunch of other sort of whatever. This is all totally fine for the most part. It's probably just going to work out okay. Make sure you have either the full song or the pattern mode selected if you want to do either of those particular things. It's cool that you can actually switch between them in the rendering thing because you couldn't do that before. It's very cool. 
Um, we're going to have a full song, and so, and so let's go to render from here, the silence, up to what we just rendered there. So I'm rendering, boom, and it's rendered. Let me actually go find the file so we can look at. Boink. And there it is. There is the song. Good times. And that is basically the bare essentials that you need to know in order to actually do something in FL. For the most part, a lot of people will recommend that you kind of just mess around with stuff to figure it out, and you can do that, but this, I think, was necessary enough just to get you to understand what channels are, what plugins come from, where they come from, and where samples live. Samples live in here, by the way. You can also, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about these in all individual things, and then, you know, the mixer, and then the playlist, that kind of stuff. This, that is the core aspect of how FL works. And it's more or less still the same as FL11, but things just look different now, and some of the buttons are different, and just, it's, it's weird. Um... The following videos will all be about individual elements and activity that we can do inside FL Studio. And throughout the coming weeks, we'll have a compendium of about all the new things and cool that you can do with stuff. That was a sentence. I promise that those words I just used. Anyway, if you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.